Hi everybody, uh, Roy here. Welcome, welcome to our winter show. I think it's almost mid, or it's past mid-January. And I, it's too good, because Erin from The Impatient Gardener is here, and I had visited her, uh, early, it was about mid-December, wasn't it? We came out in mid-December, and looked at a site she had and, and walked around the property. It's a beautiful property on uh, Lake Michigan. And she had a site that we were gonna team up together to design. And I think I'll let Aaron fill you in on what, what we're up to today uh, as far as designing. So Aaron. So if you missed the first video, um, you can certainly go back and watch it and I would recommend it so you can kind of see the area we're talking about. But generally speaking, the reason Roy and I kind of teamed up on this is because this is a really approachable size uh, garden area. It's basically 15 by 30. It has a few little site issues um, that might be really similar to things you might have in your own garden. And uh, it's an area that can be worked off of in the future. So you, we design this little area and then we can spread out as, as we go by. And I think it's, it's probably something like a lot of people might have in their own yard. So um, very approachable. So today, um, Roy is going to walk me through his vision uh, for a design here. Okay. And I think Aaron had a, a, a good word, approachable. Mm -hmm. These are all situations that a lot of you have, and I have a lot of gardeners run into is enhancing and adding value to an established garden. So basically after we, we walked around and I took a look at it, I put the area, it was a 15 by 30 square, that wasn't actually square foot area, but the total of square footage was 15 by 30. So I created a simple rectangle, that's 15 by 30 feet. And Aaron helped me locate east west, north, and south, so we have the direction on here. And by going out to the side, I had a pretty good idea of sun conditions, and we discussed that, the conditions, soil conditions, and some of the relationships of the plant material that are in the area, and some of the construction that will be taking place. So basically what I did, uh, I put together, well, we talked on site about some of the plants you would see on, on her YouTube, and I listed the plants we had talked about on a list, so I make a list first of what we had discussed, and their effect on the site. And then I added plants that would, that, that would play in good relationships with the plants we discussed. So with my list here, I think uh, Aaron and I now will just talk about uh, the, the patterns, the size of the patterns in relationship to the plants we're using within the plant patterns. So I've just put down my first idea, Aaron, was if you, oh, my first idea is to locate the shrubs. Oh, right, yes, yeah. so we do have two pagoda dogwoods that are in there. And I would say those are probably roughly, I'm trying to think here, roughly, you know, maybe, maybe we've got one about here and one maybe about here. And, you know, what are we thinking for spread on those? I mean, obviously they're sort of a multi-stemmed situation. So, but they're probably, you know, gonna grow, grow what, maybe, um, well, you know, eventually we'll yeah. probably get what, six, seven feet around probably maybe even bigger, mm -hmm. but you know, we're probably- And we're working, the squares probably, are one foot square, right, so right. about what? So I'm way over. That's okay. Yeah. Roy always says, make sure you have an eraser. Eraser, I have the big one on hand today. Yeah. So in case. But anyways, you get the general <laughs> idea of where we're at. We're probably yeah. about here and here for a center location on those okay. and multi-stem, so absolutely can plant pretty right up close to the trunk on those, I would think. Yeah, and you get light from various other, besides direct light, you'll get filter light going mm -hmm. in from the sides in, or in early spring. Yeah. So I'll just put a little mark out there, okay. roughly there we go. with that. We'll do that over here. And the cool thing about this is you don't have to be precise. I mean, I tell people if I was an architect, put a building down, they'd all fall down. None of, none of my measurements are that <laughs> accurate. And that's what I love about gardening. You can be a foot off, two feet off. It doesn't matter, everything's fluid. Even the plants, the, the future is how dynamic they can be. But the key is when you select the plants and put them together, it's understanding their dynamics and their relationships, that the possibility of relationships growing into each other. So the first thing when I saw this, there were geranium macorrhizum, was that up here? Yeah, uh, yes. So we had it, it mm -hmm. kind of up here. Mm -hmm. And, the, and where did the water flow through? The water was basically right. It's basically along this edge. So right on the so other the, side of that bank, there's the that's geranium. That's the geranium. So the geraniums yeah. would be up here. And, then, mm -hmm. and there was water. And it's not a lot of consistent water, was it? No, not consistent no. water. It, that, and that kind of went yep. through here. Yep. And there were high water periods in the spring. Mm -hmm. So you had some 
some drama, let's mm -hmm. say, if it had heavy rain, <laughs> yes. it'd be yes. pretty dramatic. Yes. And then it kind of dissipates, disappears. So that that's here. So when, when I looked at that, I said, well, all right, we start with geranium macrorhizum, and then we had this shade, this two shade areas here. So I thought, well, we could probably drift some geranium macrorhizum, another group of it, through here. And I, what I do now, I'm just putting larger circles down, and they're not, they're not definite. They're just circles that we can use, and we massage the plants together as we get an idea of what plant patterns we want to use. So if we put We'll just put GM here, geranium macrorhizum. And then one of the things we came up as we walked, I think initially was this area, transitioning from, uh, was it sun to shade here? Mm -hmm. I think it was sun to shade. Kind of more, actually it's a little bit farther, you know. This way? Yep, farther, okay. farther we'll put, way, yep. We'll put a circle here. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And in that I had a plant called Millennia Heidenbrot, which is a vertical grass. It gets about, uh, in bloom it might get Four and a half feet tall but you can see through it so it's a see-through grass and and as a companion planting is echinacea purpurea alba i put epa and the echinacea purpurea is vertical also mm -hmm. and takes up vertical space so they're both vertical space takers but yet the grass allows air movement through the planting so the echinacea will always have uh, minimal disease issues and the best part is light can get to the foliage because it goes through the grassy foliage of uh, flowering stems of the millennia. So I thought, well, okay, we'll do that here. Again, we'll massage that into another layer. And then another sit, a ta a discussion we had was salvias. You mm -hmm. mentioned salvias, mm -hmm. that you like salvias. So again, where, where was the sunnier spot? So this is kind of the sunnier, well, you know, south here, but this half is generally, generally sunnier. And this, this turned to more shade. More and shade then as we go this way, we get into more shade on this edge. But the good portion of, a good portion of this, probably three quarters of this, is going to be quite sunny. Okay. So say we take, uh, we have the macrorhizum, geranium macrorhizum here. So we could look over in this way. I'm, again, I'm just doing a circle. And we could put salvia crystal blue. And then we could look in this, take this area, which is sunny to shade right here, mm -hmm. put a circle here. And I, I added a grass that we hadn't talked about. It's called Sparabolus aeroides. And Sparabolus aeroides is a grass with very soft texture, but it has bluish green foliage. But unlike the native prairie drop seed, this drop seed blooms in June. So it has a very open, airy flower, S-A, very open, airy flower with bluish green leaves, and it loves well-drained soils. Mm -hmm. And we talk about your soils on the well-drained side. Exactly, yep. And then the millennia likes more moisture, and that could be on a slope going down to where actually there might be more moisture on the down slope. Yep. And then on, with the salvia, uh, the, the sprabulus, I had a, a picked out... Uh, let me see on my list. Oh, we have um, Stakey's Umalo. Mm. That's one choice. Or we could do Salvia Wisui or Salvia East Friesen. So now we've got options okay. that we can pick and choose mm -hmm. and we can see how those options play into other okay. things we're doing. And then in the, in the corner where it's shadier here, I had an op option would be uh, Millennia Paul Peterson, which is a short millennia, mm -hmm. and the flowers are more arching than the vertical. So the flowers on this would contrast the Millennia Heidenbrot in this area where it's sunny. I think we can drag it all the way into here. And I'm making the circles bigger now because if what we want to have is continuity between uh, larger groups so we don't get too choppy. Right. with small patterns, right. small, 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 yep. small, small. And I mentioned Panicum Prairie Dog. Mm -hmm. Panicum Prairie Dog is a new selection. It's short, it's about three and a half, four feet tall, mm -hmm. but very vertical. Right. So it stays very vertical, full sun, well-drained soil. And then we have options for that too. And one I came up with, the first one was Coreopsis Golden Showers. And Golden Showers is a native Coreopsis to the East Coast, it has very narrow foliage. And it's pretty common in the trade, mm -hmm. but it, it'll get 
as high and slightly, probably as high as the uh, panicum. They'll be at equal heights. Okay. And then the golden shower uh, spreads by short rhizomes. So it gets, it spreads much, it's a slow spreading rhizominous plant. Mm -hmm. And the cool thing is when it hits the crown of the panicum, the panicum stops at dead because oh. the rhizomes cannot push through the crown of the panicum. Right. The panicum is like this really tough crown plant. So, and then the yellow will play off the purple, the salvia lisui, mm -hmm. if we use that here, mm -hmm. that blooms and it's the first salvia to rebloom. So that'll bloom in mid-May to early June and you don't have to cut it back, it reblooms right through its old flowers. That's great. So that's one one option mm -hmm. for that. And then the, we have the geranium macrorhizum again, which we can massage maybe into the shade a little bit more here. We can mm -hmm. sweep, we have the shade right in here. Mm -hmm. So the one area that uh, to tie into is we'll put a circle here. And the cool thing is I don't know what to do. <laughs> As we're playing into your Brunera mm -hmm. and we're playing into the, uh, it's, we're going down into the wet area. Mm -hmm. So options for the transitional area from sun to shade right. in here, if we go sun to shade, there's two sedges. That's Carex uh, bromoides and then uh, Carex grissia. The Carex grissia is a dark green sedge with widely, it kind of looks like liriope. Mm -hmm. Sure, okay. It's a nice dark green look. Mm -hmm. And the cool thing about grissia, it's a floodplain sedge. So that'll take a tremendous amount of flooding, water levels high for a, a few days, mm -hmm. and then it takes dry soil. It'll go into dry conditions because sometimes all through the summer there's no flooding mm -hmm. and the soil dries out a little bit. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Carex bromoides, is a fine textured sedge that takes moist woodland soil. Mm -hmm. So it can't be into the flooded area where the water would stay a day or two, but it can transition into moist soil and continue in moist soil. And that carex bromoides can go into the shade, more, more shade then too. Okay. So it'll help, it's a transitional plant. Mm -hmm. So I guess what we've got so far is I've got groupings in, in rough relationships to each other. So then I, First question would be, well, what do you think? Well, well, I think it's great. <laughs> you know, obviously, did you think well, I was going to say anything else? Well, no, I, I think emotionally, it's, like emotionally, yellow. I, I, I yeah. love it, and I and I, I quite like the addition of some yellow in here to bring mm -hmm. some, you know, color to a, you know, an otherwise sort of, you know, um, you know that it will work so well with any blues we have going on in here. <sighs> love that. I love these interesting grasses that have been worked in here. I mean, I'm. I'm seeing all things. Yeah, these here. these three grasses will play well together because mm -hmm. they're different. are different architecturally. Right. So you have the cloud like of the sprabulus, mm -hmm. tremendously vertical panicum, and a tremendously vertical millennia, but you see through it. Mm -hmm. The panicum mm -hmm. will be about four feet tall, but it still has dense foliage, right. so it doesn't. But then it has uh, purple flowers, mm -hmm. so it looks like little purple, little purple cloud when oh, it blooms. Neat. Great. And and then this is what I like doing. Now we say, okay, now we have, we kind of have an idea of the patterns. Mm -hmm. There's some playful things we can put in. There's an oryngium called uh, blue glitter. Okay, sure, yes, yeah. I've, I've seen that, so yes. So in, into the white cone flowers, we can it. put a few blue glitter where it's sunny and we can carry the blue glitter into the yellow coreopsis. Right. So you don't need a lot, you need one here, one here, okay. one. And the blue glitter, we can put, say numbers on the paper but you put them out emotionally. Mm -hmm. When you're planting this, you sure. just say to yourself, oh, I like them. Mm -hmm. So it's more an emotional layout, except you have you know, seven or eight with you and you can put them right. wherever you feel right. they'll do they'll do their best. And the other plant we can use is Aster oblongifolius, October Skies. October Skies is an aster the deer don't eat. Oh, there we so go. So it, it has a, it, and it's a low one, it only gets around uh, 24, 30 inches tall, okay. and it's very mounding and blooms mm -hmm. late. So again, I wouldn't even tell you where to put those, so you can place that emotionally sure. too, where you'd okay. like to get color, but it gives you a nice late fall color with mm -hmm. the architecture structure and fall color of the plants. Mm -hmm. And then one more I added was Melomonium. Mm -hmm. uh, I've not platyfold. grown that, but I, I've seen That'll it, it's so beautiful. Fit beautifully here oh, because good. of your soil. Good. And that's another one that can be added in with the uh, Sparabolus, mm -hmm. 
And you could also put some in with the uh, beautifully with the crystal blue okay. salvias. Great. So oh, yeah. when the salvias are crystal blue isn't a strong reed bloomer, but the calyxes are green. Mm -hmm. So it goes from soft blue to lime green. Mm -hmm. And then you'll have clouds of blue floating above the lime green salvias. Right. And again, that's that's an emotional position. Mm -hmm. We can put them where mm -hmm. enough to get in, but you might say, ah, I want to put three in here. And then you might all of a sudden want to put three in here. Okay. It, it just depends right. how you're feeling. And, right. and, um, and then the Molini Paul Peterson, we could take the Stakey's Umalo out of here mm -hmm. because it takes shade. Mm -hmm. And we could drift that in Neat. in groups with the Paul Peterson. Neat. So that, that that basically you have a large group of millennia, mm -hmm. and then this by oh, I don't know by August end of August, it mostly seed heads and vertical. Mm -hmm. So again, you could put a not in the shade, but you could put an aster of blonde folius. And uh, in here, I just thought of it. You could use another native aster, short eye. Okay. And the deer don't seem to eat that one either. It's right. a woodland aster, but right. it's tall. It's about yeah. three feet tall, but very vertical. Okay. And it's blue. So, so I can write aster short eye down just to. And then when you have them in here, you could plant them all the way up the hill if you want. Neat. Okay. And unless the, you know what, the deer will nibble on it if the deer pressure is too high. Mm -hmm. But if you have deer that kind of just walk through the garden and not sit there eating, mm -hmm. they won't bother. Because okay. I use that on, well, we have that here at Lake Geneva, deer pressure. Mm -hmm. And it's heavier here because it's home, 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 home. Sure. Um, yeah. So that's our start. That's and we, great. And we can turn it into numbers. What would you, in this area where we don't really have any circles, I mean, we've got, obviously we got these right. Rona dogwoods. Is this, you would just kind of blend these circles I think together I'd, in those areas? I'd probably take, since we haven't come up with anything right. here, I'd take the geranium macrorhizum mm -hmm. and make a river right through okay. here. Okay, neat, to connect that off. And then with the okay. macrorhizum, that kind of forms a carpet-like ground cover, yeah. so that'll give you a river through here. Neat. And then we just have to, is this shady here? This is sun? This is sun. Oh, okay. This would be pretty sunny, yeah. Okay, so we got we have that. Mm -hmm. And what else did we talk about on our visit? We got the salvias, the echinacea. Oh, well, do you have anything you think of that you could tie into what you have up here, color wise or texture? Um oh boy, you're putting me on the spot. Um well, what about colors? Do you have any colors going on up here on the hill that we could use yeah, let, after uh, the geranium's done? Um Yes, what's in there? <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I do have colors there, <laughs> but what's there right now? Well, ironically, I actually ripped out most of what was there to facilitate the, the okay. work we're having done. So I don't, I was, I'm going to sort of play off what we do here to replant okay. that area. Well, one thing. But, but generally speaking, over here, you know, I, you know, there are a few whites in there, I think, you know, that. Oh, well, white's good. It's easy to work with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So we, if you look at sun, we have the salvia crystal blue. Yep. We have the salvia uh, wisui. Mm -hmm. So in between the crystal blue, I'll put a circle. We could put some salvia snow hill. Okay. And we could drift salvia Thanks. snow hill Thanks. in through here. Yeah. And that would go up the hill that sure. way. And it's a snow hill blooms almost all summer. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. It's one of the few salvias mm -hmm. that never stops blooming. Yeah. Uh, every, all the salvia, even Wisui has a stop period, mm -hmm. but it reblooms quickly mm -hmm. through its old foliage. And then we could use a grass through here. Um, okay, if we extend this up here a little bit, yep. make that into the sun, mm -hmm. and as it slopes down towards the water, mm -hmm. we could make this uh, or have this champs here gold towel. Oh, but it right. needs that moisture. But okay. it's one of the few dischamps is it's the only one I grow because it, it can live in average soil too. Okay. It doesn't need constant moist soil. Okay. And dischampsia gold towel doesn't get rust or leaf spot. Okay. The other dischampsia is if you turn around and it's humid out, yeah. they're covered in leaf yeah. spot. Yeah. So we could use dischampsia gold towel here. I think that would work well because I think that it, that there is going to be some moisture as we as we come down there. I think that would work. Yeah, right there. If it's okay. got some moisture there, and then mm -hmm. the salvia can, yeah. you can use white salvias mm -hmm. through here, so you have continuity through so. here. 
and it'll kind of stop as the moisture sure. picks up. And then that's where you can pick up the the sedges, okay. the mixture of sedges, right. tied into the geranium, mm -hmm. and then your Brunera too that you right. have going Good. through the shade. And then if you feel like it later, you can drift, you can take the Carex grisia mm -hmm. and Bromoides and mix that up. Then as it gets drier, you can use Carex albicans or other sedges and have Brunera. Right. If you like stopping, Great. wherever you think it should stop. Yeah. Good, wonderful. Up, up on the table. Love it. So I, I think now I was figuring out, uh, I think, square footage mm -hmm. of each pattern. Mm -hmm. So all I do now, once I have this, as I'd be sitting at home right now, you know, listening to something, right. some music, whatever. What is it that you're <laughs> listening to when you're working on this? I put, I had on, uh, I spelled it wrong on my Andrew Lloyd Webber. Okay. So I, and, it, and I just listened to that and I, it's just, background music but it's it's music i'm familiar with mm -hmm. and it's just doesn't bug me mentally right. it enhances right. me right. and then i just i have this started up and usually i have tracing paper over mm -hmm. too mm -hmm. and then i get it now i get serious so i go okay i'm gonna put this bed here mm -hmm. i'm gonna take the, probably this champs i'll start here that's why I have tracing paper because yep. now I've got yep. I've got so many highways. I don't know where right. I'm going on this right map. <laughs> so I got this road I, mm -hmm. okay, through here, and I'll put some hash marks on it mm -hmm. so I can define it. Okay. And then I put see I got this one here. Hash mark here. So this is our our. Now we're getting closer. Mm -hmm. This is our closer hash mark mm -hmm. here. And then I would put the river of. Geranium macrorhizum, we'll have that kind of just touching the shade of mm -hmm. it. Through there. And have that come through here. Mm -hmm. It's geranium macrorhizum. And the geranium macrorhizum, too, you can also mix colors. Mm -hmm. You can get yes. pink ones, red, mm -hmm. uh, white ones. You can mix that up a little mm -hmm. bit. That'll be through here. And then we have the... Uh, Panicum Prairie Dog, so that'll kind of continue off of here up to our shade area like mm -hmm. this. So that's this hash mark. And then we have right up to here, we'll probably take the millennia slightly down. It can go into the moisture mm -hmm. substantially. And we'll make that a little shorter up here, tie it to the That'll tie into the panicum and the coreopsis mm -hmm. golden showers. Mm -hmm. And the salvia will take right at the edge of the shrub mm -hmm. drip line. Bring that into here. Mm -hmm. And we'll take Melanie and Paul Peterson and just put the heavier, we'll just run it right through here. And that way we can have the lower plant with the denser flowers in front of the soft clouds of the sprobulus aroides mm -hmm. and the salvia. And that'll be our, yeah. And then what I do is I take my ruler and I look at the right scale. Mm -hmm. I did that on a project once. I was doing everything in eighth scale uh -huh. and I measured it in quarter scale. Oh yeah, oops. Wow, what, <laughs> <laughs> what, why is this not working out? Okay, so we got, and on this one inch equals, or the half inch equals one foot. Mm -hmm. So I would just measure uh, this one we got uh, 12 and a half feet and then I would with the actually what you could do with the grids mm -hmm. I could go one two I could count each sure, one two sure. and yep. come up with the numbers but I'll mm -hmm. just generally measure it mm -hmm. so I've got 12 by four or five I meet in the middle it's wider here but narrower here so I'll meet about right here just to okay. make it uh, for the sake of quickness yep Four times 12, 36. So I got about 40 square feet here. Okay. And I would measure each one. I'd go to here. Okay, that's uh, 10 by 5. What I got? Yeah, 10 by 4. Again, I got 4. Let's say 45. Mm -hmm. So we go down a little bit into that. 45 square feet. Mm -hmm. Now look at the Geranium River. We extend that from here. We got to about 12 feet. 
and get this shrub in there, 12 by 4, 36 square feet. So we have the drain river through here, about 36 square feet. And we got the panicum. That's about, let's move up from the shade. Okay, we got that. It's about nine. Nine by five, 45 square feet. We'll make that 50. See how flexible things are. Okay, <laughs> why are you doing that, Roy? Because I can. Right. You're, you're missing square footage here. Sure, right. And then in reality, you can detail it. When you get out there, what, right. I, what I would do is I put markers in. Right. And I can do actual measurement, mm -hmm. and you can get the right number yep. of plants. And then the millennia, I'm looking here at, okay, it's 12. 12 by uh, 6. What's 6 times 12? Well, 72. 72, okay. 36 times 2. And then we got the, that's 11 by 5, 55 square feet. It looks easy, but it's, right. I'm always confused when I right. do this. So I do everything five times. Right. And once I do this, I right. would be at home checking it again. Right. Because of that one screw up I did. <laughs> right. I've got, uh, Eight, eight by seven, 56 square feet. And then I would say, okay, let me remeasure one that I did quickly earlier and just let me check myself. So right. I'll, I'll go back to, we'll go back to the first one. I've got uh, 12 by, yeah, four, yep. uh, four times 12. 48. I screwed it. I put 36. 40. Oh, See? There you go. So 48, so I'll make yeah. this 50 square feet. Okay. And that's why, at least in my, in the Roy world of gardening, yeah. I double check everything yeah. five times. Okay. Or else I go out there with everything wrong. Right. right. And, you, and you only have to do that a couple of times right. before you double right. check yourself. Right. So. And I imagine once you get out there, and it's wrong. You go, wait, where did we go wrong here? What happened? Oh, I got to find. How did I get this so off? Who, who am I going to blame? Right. I got to find. I pointed at anybody. See, <laughs> see that guy? That was his fault. Right. Now, what I, and what I did once, too, when I measured square footage, yeah. and I would say, say you gave me an area 15 by 30 like mm -hmm. this, I multiply, let me check, 15 by 30. So I would say, okay, I got an area 15 by 30. It's 15 times 30. That means I got 450 square feet. Mm -hmm. So I divide that by 1.56, and that tells me I need 288 plants at 15 inch centers, because oh. that's how I can figure 15 inch right. centers okay. with 1.56. Sure. But I always had too many plants. Right. Why do I have too many plants when I figured it out? Because I'm not planting the edge. Oh, right. So, oh, right. Mm -hmm. So sure. really, I need, I need to measure 14 by 29, sure. Sure. not okay. 15. And that always threw me off for a number of years. <laughs> right. And someone found, Roy, you're not planting the edge. Right, right. Okay. So that's how you learn. You got to just, right. you got to have screw ups. <laughs> so I guess where we're at right now is uh, I'll, what I just did. If I say 50 square feet, so I tell you we got 50 square feet divided by 1.56, which gives you mathematically 15 centers. Mm -hmm. You need 32 plants on 15 inch centers. So that tells you how many plants and 15 you need. inch centers. Why are you landing? Why well, are you landing it? Cause that's kind of an average. It's where the, the, the plants will be using like the, the mm -hmm. salvias. Mm -hmm. You, what you want, what I'd like, I want them touching instantly. Yeah. I want, I want instant relationships, right. but yet I want to put plants that touch instantly, not thugs and bullies. Right. I want plants that are compatible. Mm -hmm. So the salvias are actually, compatible with themselves where you can put them almost pot to pot mm -hmm. and they'll have a way to to, right. to source light energy. Mm -hmm. Now if I were putting oh look we'll use another one like here like uh we'll do do the panicum and the coreopsis. Right. So if I got 50 square feet divided by 1.56 that means I need 32 plants. Mm -hmm. Well, what do I do here then as I look at the growth rate and growth habit. Right. So the coreopsis is going to take up more space right? because of its rhizomatous spreading quicker. Yep. So because I know the growth habit of coreopsis, my head right away says I have to use less of those because mm -hmm. I don't want to crowd out the panicums. Yep. 
So, but, but yet when they get height wise, they're about the same height. Mm -hmm. And I know the panicum is gonna stop the coreopsis dead in its tracks once right. it hits it. Mm -hmm. So then I'm looking at it, 32 plants. Okay, maybe I'll go uh, 18 and 14 coreopsis. Okay. So I'll use a few more panicums mm -hmm. than I will coreopsis. Right. And then when I lay them out, I'll, I'll use one, two, three panicums and two coreopsis three panicums and two coreopsis, mm -hmm. two panicums and three coreopsis. Because mm -hmm. when I get to the edge with the millennia, mm -hmm. I want to, I'm going to put a bigger group of, a bigger group of coreopsis to have more emphasis on the yellow. Right. When okay. it runs into the white. Got it. So it's really like doing a painting. Right. But again, it's emotional. Mm -hmm. So when you lay these out, you'll have the numbers there mm -hmm. and you'll just be emotional. Right. I, I want, right. I don't want that much yellow. I want more white here. Right. So you could actually get a few extra white cone flowers mm -hmm. and move them into the panicums mm -hmm. because height wise, the cone flower would actually live with the panicum too. Okay. And they wouldn't interfere with each other because all of them are vertical. Mm -hmm. So their, their use of space is up and down, not mm -hmm. sideways. So everything here is vertical. The, the sideways plant that you'd have in here would be uh, this champsia. Mm -hmm. That's wider than it is tall. Right. So with that, you want to put a little, instead of one salvia, you might put four salvias together yep. okay. and make a bigger group and put the dischampsy in between them. Yep. So, okay. so your percentage here is say we have 45 square feet, mm -hmm. <laughs> 45 divided by 1.56. Yeah, I need 28 plants and 45 square feet. Okay. So I want to go higher with the dischampsy. So I mean, with the salvia, Right. so, so I might use Oh, maybe 19 salvia mm -hmm. and then nine or 10 right. dischampsia. Okay. But then the other thing I consider for my patterns here is I'm going down the hill mm -hmm. into the stream. Yeah. I'm going to add more dischampsia in bigger groups as I go into the wetland. Yep. So okay. I would increase because that's a, that's a site issue. Yep. Okay. I'm going wet. I don't want salvias mm -hmm. where it's wet. I want dischampsia. So in a way you might end up with 11 more dischampsia going downhill. Mm hmm right above where the water would be. Right. And then you start your carex bed down mm -hmm. there. Okay. And if what happens, say, as a, as a homeowner, you don't know that. Mm -hmm. Well, when you plant this, when that floods and you see things die, mm -hmm. you go, well, then, you, then you'll know it. Then you'll adjust. <laughs> then you'll Got it. You'll, you'll know what's wrong and, there, with that. and there's nothing wrong with something dying. No, I mean, people absolutely. would say, well, I'm spending money on it. Right. Well, when I talked to people, I said, look, you're buying a perennial. Mm -hmm. You buy a gallon of milk. You drink half of it. You put it in the fridge. You open the fridge. All you have left is a half gallon of milk. You put a perennial in the ground. Four years later, you got six of them. Yeah. There's nothing you can buy that's going to give you six times your money you're spending. There you go. So I, any investment you make, you just if your dischampsia dies down here, you dig out six of them. You right. divide them. You get four. Fill that back in. And off you go. So you don't have to spend more money. Right. You just have to acknowledge that it's joyful to be a learned person. Okay. Right. So it's 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 a way to look at your investment in what you're doing. And it also gives you the freedom to learn. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with screwing up. No. I, that's my nature is to screw up. Absolutely. So what I can do then, do you see anything that you're thinking is that we need to revisit or anything? No, I don't think so. I'm, I think we're definitely on a good track. We still have, track we have this little loop around the tree, mm -hmm. but I think we can go outside the drip line. Yep. And the other thing you can do too, is if you get the geranium, mm -hmm. with the, you could take some of the Carex grissia and sprinkle that in. Oh, neat, I yeah. love that and idea. Because they're both battlers. Yeah. The geranium is right. aggressive. Mm -hmm. The Carex can spread the same way, so you can sprinkle the green texture Neat. in the shade here too yeah neat okay love that that's great and uh let's see what else i'm forget so what i what i would do normally then say we weren't having this discussion that after i take this i would draw it up in a clean way right because we right. got a lot right right there's <laughs> a lot going on there yep but in a way i like this because it, it lets people see it's 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 a thoughtful process right, right. and and who appreciates this more it's not the people 
It's the plants mm -hmm. that we actually gave thought to where they're going to live for the rest mm -hmm. of their life. Mm -hmm. We didn't just throw them in and hope to God it all works. Right, yeah. right. So the plants right. appreciate this because they have right. half a chance of having a good right. life. Right. You know, I think the thing that I often struggle with when coming up with a garden area is the ratio situation. Right. So right. In each one of these little things, I mean, I know that this comes from years of you studying these plants and knowing yeah. and working with them. And this is one of those things that I'm sure one gets better at with time and yeah. as you have experience with them. But that is always my first reaction is what should the, mm -hmm. you, know, you know, what should that ratio be between in any given area where you're working with two plants and a grid? What's that, what should that ratio be? Yeah, and it's, it is basically it's all determined by growth rate and growth habit. Mm -hmm. Because when you look at a youthful plant, they all start life in a four and a half inch right. or a six mm -hmm. inch gallon. Mm -hmm. And that's their stage of mobility. So they can go from one place to the other. But if you look at, like we mentioned, the, uh, the Coreopsis, if you look at the growth rate of the Coreopsis, you, you see that it has a much faster growth rate with its crown mm -hmm. because of the rhizominous mm -hmm. nature. And that's why I knew I'd want to use fewer of those than I would the Panicum, even though the Panicum will grow out of the crown, it won't grow as quickly. Mm -hmm. So what, when you understand the growth rate and growth habit of each plant, that allows you to put your percentages together. Because mm -hmm. I'll use uh, salvia, I'll use salvia crystal blue as an example mm -hmm. with this nepeta called early bird. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, early bird has a tremendously wide growth habit mm -hmm. quickly. So because it gets so wide, it's mounding, mm -hmm. but it grows so fast so quickly compared to the salvia crystal blue, I know because of the quick growth habit and growth rate that if I put too many nepeta in, mm -hmm. they'll smother out the salvia. So I use a 50-50, mm -hmm. the nepeta will overwhelm and reduce any light that right. the salvias can get. Mm -hmm. So I have to put in, like I use a 70-30 blend mm -hmm. because I, I know the salvia is slower growing and they don't grow near as fast as an up. So when you understand that growth rate and growth habit, then you can create your percentages mm -hmm. based on growth rate and growth habit. And it's not, it's not easy, but I tell most people, don't get caught up in what the horticultural industry wants you to get caught up in. And that's the romance of buying new stuff. Mm -hmm. Use old plants in new ways. Once you learn a plant, it'll never do something other than what you know what to do. It's not it's not like a person that'll think of a way to get back at you for something. Right. <laughs> if you forget to water it, right. I'll show you I'm going to grow twice as fast. Right. So once you know the plant, it will always do that. And then you can look at what plants will relate well to what you already know and build and build on your knowledge. Mm -hmm. But the horticultural industry, they constantly introduce new things. Right. And I'm a sucker for it. Mm -hmm. I need to try it, but I have some idea what they'll do. Mm -hmm. But it's not about what's new. So like I mentioned before, it's about what fits your personality as a gardener, your time to be a, mm -hmm. a joyful gardener. Mm -hmm. And then when you when you learn something, it's never going to change. Mm -hmm. All these plants are just true to themselves. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it it's not easy. And it's hard. Like I mentioned before, it's hard not to want to introduce a new host or something right. or a new echinacea. Right. But you, uh, what I do with those, I put them in trial areas to see mm -hmm. if they even have genetic knowledge how to live in our region. Sure. Because a lot of the plants come from Georgia or right. who knows where mm -hmm. on earth they live. Mm -hmm. And they don't have genetic knowledge of Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. So I find that out before I introduce it to my known family mm -hmm. that I'm working with. Mm -hmm. And then if they do live, then I look at, well, how do you fit in? Mm -hmm. How can I fit you into my community? Sure. So it's, it's not quick. Right but it's joyful mm -hmm. because you and the plants are great. Uh, like you have at your house, you got so many cool relationships mm -hmm. you've started with mm -hmm. plants mm -hmm. and you know your plants. Right. And that's why you share so much with people mm -hmm. because of your knowledge and awareness of what you have at your house right. and what right. you're doing. Right. And then all the people that are so joyful you're sharing with them, they want to know more. Yeah. They want to know what you're doing yeah. next. Yeah. They're, they're yes. so curious. Yeah, they are. Yeah. Yes. Well, good. That's great. So what's so okay? So the next step you would do here is you would you you know whatever you have kind of a, a cleaner a cleaner version. I of clean this, it up. Right? Yeah, yeah, I clean it up and I put the square footage in, mm -hmm. and then number of plants for each each mm -hmm. group, and and then and basically just clean up so you would have the number of plants, the square footage, and then you could take the plan and lay it out, 
with stakes and see, mm -hmm. and, and then you might decide you want to go deeper this way. And mm -hmm. then you just, whatever additional square footage you had, you would just add that many more plants. Yep. And the cool thing is once you see it, and that's kind of how I used my book, mm -hmm. my book is like a, a cookbook. It's right. how, to, how to make your first meatloaf. Right. And then when, right. once you make something edible, right. within three or four years, you might say, I want more white going through here. I'm right. going to bring the yellow into here. Mm -hmm. You start guarding into what you'd like it to right. be. It's, right. This is just a, this is like the first stage. Sure. And, and, and hopefully they live well together. Right. And that gives you the time to constantly enhance it mm -hmm. at whatever stage you want to do. Yep. And, Wonderful. Well, I love it. I think it's, I love it. Why? Well, this is fun for me to have a conversation. Usually I'm always talking to myself. Right. Well, I, don't, I don't have a lot. I'm glad of, you have somebody to talk to yeah, about it yeah. this time. Or, or if I start this process, like with some of my friends, it's, uh, Roy, I think my car is on fire. <laughs> I, got, I got to get going because they're bored to tears right. by this right. whole thoughtful well, not process. Me. I definitely not, not bored to tears here. This is, this is great. I'll tell you my, I love, um, what I love down here is this interplay of grasses amongst each other. Um, as a person who is fairly, I mean, I've grown grasses for a long time, mm -hmm. but my comfort level with grasses is growing and understanding them and how they work together. Yeah. This is great because in a lot of times I tend to think like somehow grasses are, uh, I don't know how I've always sort of thought, but I like to see them intermingling with each mm -hmm. other, like any other perennial yeah. could intermingle with another thing rather than you have to stick pick, plant one grass and sort of stick with it oh, and yeah. you maybe put something over here. But it's just like any other perennial in terms of working right. it in together with other with other plants. So really interesting. Yeah, and these are and once you see how they relate to each mm -hmm. other, then you can start putting the grasses in other locations to support other s systems you have in play. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing too is you take you take a few of these sproutless aroides mm -hmm. and you don't draw a line here. You put a few in here with the panicum. Yeah. And then you never see a distinct stop and yep. start. You, you blend them together. And that's the, that's so the key there yeah. is, is that no distinct start and stop. Yeah, where two, where two boundaries meet, that's where, how do you soften right. one into the other? Right. And sometimes a distinct line is okay. Mm -hmm. It's kind of nice to have a mm -hmm. distinct grouping, mm -hmm. and that's just again. Well, I always emotional. think of I always think of in the Lurie Garden the sort of the salvia river. Oh yeah, you, yeah. When you Pete's. think of a distinct, when right. you think of a distinct line in my head, that sort of yeah. sticks out as a great yeah. example that, of a very distinct line. Yeah. yeah. And and Pete softened it. That was the first time he's at Chicago. He did a lot of first things in Chicago, mm -hmm. and he does them so well again because he's been growing plants since the seventies. Sure. Right. But he broke up the Salvia River with Sparabolus mm -hmm. and Panicums. Mm -hmm. Oh, Sparabolus and Little Blue Stem. Mm -hmm. So instead of that straight line he had here, that's why yep. without him, I probably would have mentioned Carex Grissia. Right. Because he broke up the Sparabolus yep. River with, mm -hmm. or the Salvia River with Sparabolus mm -hmm. through it. Right. And he said, why not? Yeah. So I think that's like if I could, if I could sell bumper stickers. I'd have to. Why not? You never know. <laughs> you, <laughs> right. know? you never know. There you go. So That's just great. give it a shot. That's great. Wonderful. Very exciting. Love it. Well, I'll clean this up for you. Great. And get it to you. And wonderful. You know, Good. Then we can move on to the. We can move on to the next steps. Yeah. Come we'll spring the, in, the, in right, a few months, right? right? In a couple so. months, this will all be real. Right. And so will a million other things right. that we're Absolutely. doing. <laughs> Absolutely. Wonderful. Well, thank you, Roy. This is Aaron. Thanks so this much. Is, this is just one. I just love seeing the process here. Um, it was extremely educational for me, but very interesting to watch and have you talk through this also. Thank you for that. But on top okay. of that, I just I'm really excited about it. Well, I, I want to add one more thing to the show. I always bring, not always, I shouldn't say I bring a book. Yes, with. I, this I, is, I was wondering what you're reading. This now. is what I'm reading. I read a lot of Wendell Berry. Um, and this was a, a book out with all his essay, a lot of his essays in. So right now I'm going through the, his, his uh, essays and kind of revisiting some of the essays that I've read before. Because I really enjoy him. Yeah. I enjoy his look at urban or rural communities mm -hmm. and how they've changed and how it's so important to get back to some of the ways we lived mm -hmm. in community before. Mm -hmm. And he's very, uh, he's, he's very affectionate Wonderful. the way he writes so i just thought i'd show that to everybody and you got time this is roy's book club look it up <laughs> I book it that's, the, that's the next the next video series coming for you roy's book club 
Absolutely. Well, thanks, great. Aaron. Hey, thank you, Roy. This is wonderful. Well, Appreciate I'm glad it. you're here. Yeah. Thanks for the visit. Thank you. Thank you.